So if you cast your minds back to episode 208, we had some special guests on the show, Mr. Duncan Rhodes and Peter Buxton talking about two thin coats paints. Well, guess what? The guys are back with some exclusive news. How are you doing, gentlemen? Oh, very well. Thank you. Very well. It's good to be here. Yes, I'm doing fine as well. Thanks for having us on, guys. Any time. So, obviously, last time we were chatting about the, uh, the the first wave of two thin coats paints, and uh, I think you've got some some news to share with us on the uh, on the site today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's big news, hey Peter. It is huge news, Duncan. Huge. <laughs> That's, <Drum roll>. right. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. Um, shall I spill the beans? Yeah. yeah. Go on. Go on. Yeah. It's your paint. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's not my paint. It's got. <laughs> It's got your face on it, it makes me feel all guilty. It's our face. Um, there's <laughs> wave face. two. Wave two, everybody. 60 more paints. <gasps> that is super exciting. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is very cool. <laughs> yes, yes. We're expanding the range. Um, it's a whole other 60, which is going to be uh, done through a Kickstarter once again. And this is uh, something that really fleshes it out. You know, the, the original 60 is like the uh, the core the core body of it, you know, the girders, the uh, the scaffolding, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is this is the extra stuff that sort of fleshes out and allows you to basically just sort of stay within this range, basically, and just paint anything. Um, so it's really cool. It's got lots of fun colours in it, lots of really useful colours. Um, ones that uh, <laughs> now I've been using them for a little while. Uh, I feel like I can't do without them now. <laughs> so what uh, what kind of brought about Wave Two then? Um, well, we uh, we want to make a a range of it's like top quality paints i think it's fair to say don't you agree peter i completely agree very very high quality paints absolutely absolutely and um we um we chose the initial 60 that we were getting going with that was like a it was a strategic choice to have those ones because what they are are the uh, the most useful paints that um i tend to use really and so it's um they were all selected to allow that bare bones you can paint lots of stuff with these things and you know you can mix some colors to kind of get around things but there are definitely gaps in it because that's the necessity of you know when you decide to do it in triads um because they kind of force your hand to have like um well we're not just going to have like one or two reds we're going to have three and then three blues and three purples um but because those three have to sort of be in line of the same sort of color um it means that there's just gaps of things that are really obvious so for example if anyone's doing any world war ii stuff you need a variety of like military greens like like olive greens and in wave one there aren't any whereas in wave two there are loads um we, there's no room for things like turquoises for like maybe magical effects or glowing effects things like that but in wave two that's what we've got um it uh means you can like for very common colors sometimes you want a bright popping highlights to take it that bit further in wave two we can do really bright highlights so it's um it, it's all cool fun things that are going to be um, just useful all over the place. But like I say, it builds on top of what we had before. Amazing. That's uh, that's really cool. I, I know, um, like you say, you can get around some of the uh, the missing colours with mixing, but having pre-mixed stuff is just infinitely easier, isn't it? Especially, yes. like I say, with the triads <laughs> as well, where you've got your your bass, your mids and your highs all, all ready to go. So so what's the plan? Kickstarter again, did you say? When, when does it all kick off? Go for it, Peter. The other man uh, yep, <laughs> um, it's going to kick off on the 24th of January um, of this month. Hopefully, it should all be full full go by the time you hear this, and everything will be great. Uh, but yeah, it's going to run until the 9th of February, so we're not going to be you as much time as we want. However, we have got great news: is that after the Kickstarter, we are going to be on GameFound uh, for any late backers, anybody wants to be on there, and of course, you can put all your nice, lovely little add-ons there and order more sets if you want of course you'd want loads of sets but yeah we're also um going to be providing a chance to get hold of wave one as well oh, oh, nice. oh, nice. so if yeah. if anybody wants to have wave one and wave two together because who doesn't want 120 great paints um <laughs> then you also have the chance to do that as well that's really cool. So with the first Kickstarter, you had some fun uh, unlockables and exclusive models and uh, even some uh, exclusive paints like um, there was a Blood Effect paint in there. Are there any plans for similar unlockables on this one? There is for sure. Uh, I don't really want to spill the secrets <laughs> because uh, we, we might be taking it a little bit different. But yeah, there'll be there'll be some unlocks there. There's some fun things that Duncan has been working on and Roger as well. Uh, we've got a few surprises in the background. And uh, yeah, there there might be some new paints that we might not have told you about yet. Ooh, some uh, e- experimental stuff. Uh, Duncan's <laughs> been donning his white 
lab coat on and <laughs> bubbling away and doing that. And we think we've got some really, um, really cool effect paints. That might not spoil it a little bit that that we've uh, that you're gonna, you guys are gonna be able to get early access to. Amazing. So I, I guess that segues quite nicely into you guys have been quite involved in the in the creation of these colours. And it's not just a case of these are uh, off the shelf paints that you've just stamped your name on. You've been kind of like actively involved in the creation, haven't you, Duncan? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's been a very involved process. Um, Transatlantis were great about it, really, because um, uh, when all of this started way back in with wave one, um, it was like, so, you know, we think of these paints and things like that. And uh, we'd reply, well, we think it'd be really cool if there was a structure to it with this sort of system and things like that. And then the response was, that's amazing. What colours do you want? And we're like, uh, how many can we have? And it sort of went from there. And so um, I was able to essentially select them all and mix them all. So I'd be creating like a, a set of samples and it would go from there. And then there'd be um, days where we'd be working on each one one at a time to adjust it, to make it... Um, like appropriate to what we w- would want um so you know we'd see them all laid out and we go well we think this one should change think this one should alter you know like sometimes they change completely there are some cases where the original triad we then took the the darkest one and that became the middle one because it was like we expected and then an entirely new one would be created um there were some that i tried mixing out samples that when we were seeing them all laid out together we were like no it's just not quite what we want so we sort of like basically threw it out and said to the uh the scientists who um, can explain paint to you in words that you understand, but not in the order that they say them. It's like, it's really <laughs> strange science, they explain it, but um, they'll come back. So uh, one of them was, uh, I mean, I suppose we'll talk about the colours in a bit, but one's our highlight for red, um, which I don't know what they did, but they came back with the reddest red that ever did red. Um, <laughs> like eye-watering red. So, <laughs> um, so it was great to be that involved in it. So all of these paints were designed that way. And um, aside from the colour, the actual properties of the paint were things that, again, I was allowed to pick. So I'd be given samples of bases and things, and I'd select which ones I liked and things. So it all came from there. Um, so the the properties of each one are things that basically I pointed to at the end and approved. Um, so yeah, as it turns out, they ended up <laughs> the stack that they do, which I didn't expect. But do you know what? It, it's great. And I'm really happy with them. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been cool. They're not just off the shelf. They're all completely mixed, made from scratch, I guess. That's really cool. Did you kind of, I guess, background doing videos and painting many, many models, helping form that then? <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it, it really does. Because, um, I mean, my my speciality is um, you know, army painting kind of stuff. You know, I I, um, I encounter and deal with lots of people who are getting into the hobby. Um, and when you first walk into a paint range and just see it all laid out, like all these potential colours, it's really confusing. So um, it was that that informed the idea of creating this these paints and triads so that as you understand, OK, so you basically want to have highlights and things and shading and stuff. All right. So these colours are sort of laid out so I can follow that. But as you gain confidence, you'll then, of course, go and do whatever you want and play around with them however you want, which is mm. what we intend. Um, but, yeah, the, the sort of areas where I've been working uh, I realise I joined uh, the TV studio 10 years ago now, which is, uh, feels a bit scary. But all of that doesn't form the whole reason why it is formed in the way that it is. Amazing. Well, should you tell us about some of the colours then? I know you've got quite a few new triads and then some exciting new stuff like glazes in there as well. Mm-hmm. OK, uh, where should we start, Peter? Uh, well, we could start at the top. Um Mm. Uh, at, at number 61 which is my okay. favorite uh yeah, yeah. We, we we split it out a bit differently this time duncan haven't we we've, we've got some triads but we've um when duncan was developing this duncan and roger were developing this i, I think to say you, you you've really expanded on the idea of the range and you've gone beyond where i've well i think where we all thought we would ever be really so there's some uh, there's some other exciting stuff at the bottom so um i think yeah. we're going to start with some some pinks yeah, well, yeah, so, yeah, with the triads. So, yeah, yeah we've got triads. some yeah. regular triads, just like in Wave 1, um, and there are 13 lines, if I believe, if I remember correctly, so that's what, 39 paints. And uh, these are um, like before, but it's some completely new tones. So, yeah, we start out with a pink, and this goes quite bright pink. So we had burgundy in Wave 1, um, but we kind of went up to sort of like, well, you know, like a lighter one, uh, lighter pony, so stuff that looks really good for like cloaks and things like that but this takes it further this is like right into the pink so things like you might want to have like the gums of some monster you know inside the mouth and things like that but then it goes really bright so anyone who's looking to um i don't know paint some space soldiers that like guitars and things this is good <laughs> right because it goes really bright 
so yeah, and I remember Roger challenging me to see how bright we could go on this, and we we went very bright on the brightest one. Um, um, I, I was going to say I've, I've been using the tongue for um, to the paint. Uh, to use the tongue, been using the pink to mm. paint tongues. Mm-hmm. Yes. If you if you want it to look really really pink and icky. It's, yes. Yeah. Yes. Especially the sharp highlights on the very end with neo pink. Yeah, neo pink. <laughs> yeah. Amazing pink. Amazing um, pink. Next up, we've got ones that I was very keen to get in. Um, these originally was sort of were in wave one, but it, it just wasn't quite. It, we were making compromises on the reds that we had there, so we thought we'd save it till later. And this is uh, more of maroon reds. I really like these sorts of colours. They're ones that I find look just look really um, regal, really um, really rich. You know, they're great for, for cloaks and things and red armors and you know, all that, that sort of stuff. Um, but they're always useful because if you're painting just, say, um, uh, for example, a dude on a horse, it's um, you want it to look, uh, well, like the, the, the horse gear and everything to be well maintained. It's a beautiful red to do for saddle cloths and things like that. It's really, you, I find I just put this colour in just about everything I paint. So we made a full tried around it. So really nice maroon kind of tones that start to go more towards mm. a pastel sort of colour as a highlight. Next up, we've got some turquoise. This is the one that Roger was very keen on. Um, because he loves these sorts of tones. Um, so we're thinking of kind of magical effects with this sort of set of colours. Um, so they're nice and bright, nice and sharp, very punchy. Um, and uh, yeah, work very well on like glowing parts and guns and that sort of thing. Um, this is followed up by another set that I was really keen on. And again, these are ones that were sort of in wave one, but again, it was a compromise. So we saved it till wave two. And that is these blues, royal blues, really deep blues. Um, so these are um, different from the ones we had before and that these are more rich. Um, so again, these work very well for things like cloaks and fabrics and that sort of thing. So nice and deep sort of colors. Um, then we've got the uh, the first of what I consider to be a skin tone triad, um, and this is for sort of orcs and goblin sort of colors. Um, now I think people are going to be really interested in these ones, wouldn't you say, Peter? <laughs> uh, I would say that there is a these are particularly my my some of my favorites, mm-hmm. uh, mainly be, mainly because of the one in the middle. Um, mm-hmm. Retro appeal. <laughs> is, is, is the one in the middle a close match? Because I think a lot of people might be interested in that one. <laughs> Some might might say, uh, <laughs> yeah, we had um, there were some particular tones that we had a lot of requests for um, back when all of this was starting and everything like that. And um, this is again one that we uh, basically we wanted to set tones like this that are slight the greens, but more sort of fleshy kind of greens, you know, more sort of they got a sort of hint of bone kind of color in there. Um, and this is again something we wanted to have a wave one, but we couldn't fit it in, so we thought we'd do it properly and do a, a whole triad based around these. And they look great, don't they? They look really nice. And, they and they do. Well. Uh, I, I've I've not painted an orc using any other type of green <laughs> since <laughs> since these have come out. Um, yeah, so especially guitar all... guitar playing orcs as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So these are ones that. Um, so uh, when I talk about the properties of paint, uh, I'm sure everyone's aware of some colour that they've tried using in the past to paint an army where it's like a major colour on it, and um, the paint will feel thick, but it just doesn't cover very well. You know what I mean? And it, like, it's just yeah. frustrating to use. And even though um, it's like you, you'd add a touch of wars to it, right? Fit it down, stuff like that. And you're like, oh my God, I've got to do the coat, have to coat, have to coat. It's starting to go lumpy. What am I doing wrong? Um, now, greens are something that I've encountered a lot of that in the past. And so when it comes to ones like this, with these, these orcish sort of colors, um, I was very keen on making sure that they did cover really well. And thank goodness they do. So they're yeah. just a joy to use. They're just really, really fun, really um, uh, easy. I would say you can get an even coat, smooth coat, very quickly, very easily with, uh, with no fuss. Um, so I'm really proud of those ones. And same is true of the next two lines, which are um, I think of as the military greens. And we've got two tones here. Uh, this is because um, there's uh, it is quite weird um, when you think about the painting miniatures and things. It goes into military things. And there's also landscapes and things, and like, there's also like other sort of magical sort of green things. And you realise actually, green is a really um, common colour in a range because there's so many potential kinds of green that you can mm. have. Yeah. And I didn't really think about this when we were starting to do this, but um, yeah, it, it really came out in wave two when we realised we had loads of greens in there. Um, now we ended up with two lines of military greens because the different sorts of military green here. The uh, the first line is more greyish green. The second line is more olive green. So when I talk about greyish green, I'm talking about things like German uniform. Um, so if you think World War Two, that sort of, um, you know, the legendary field grey, right? When you look at it, is it green? Is it grey? Well, it's sort mm. of no. 
And that's what this line's all about. So this is great for things like um, elven cloaks. So that's what I've been doing recently. I've been painting some wood elves, and these are ideal for getting that sort of blend into the surrounding kind of cloak going on. The one after that are the ones that we had tons of fun naming. So <laughs> these are Fury Green, Gung Ho Green, and Green Beret. Uh, <laughs> Genius. <laughs> no prizes for guessing what you paint those. <laughs> so, um, Fury Green is basically ideal for painting um, US tanks, you might say. Um, and Gung Ho Green is a little bit lighter. This is the one I use to paint um, some of my own tanks. So there's some Flames of War British tanks, and they are all Gung Ho Green. Um, and then Green Beret is a lighter one, so it's a nice highlight for all these. Um, so I think these ones are going to be really popular. Um, yeah, yeah, I too. I've really enjoyed painting Shermans, but I've gone a bit more American, a bit darker with Fury Green mm. and uh, using a cobbled grey to highlight them, which is the highlight from the the grey green as well, mm. just to get a different tone mm -hmm. um, than than you would do with like the more British kind of green that yeah, was around then. It's more it's more the more the other green. Uh, and incidentally as well, I've also used cobbled grey for flesh, dead flesh. Oh, nice. uh, oh, okay. Happy nice. little actor than that was. So, <laughs> I've seen that done yet. That's cool. You have yeah. so pictures of that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so uh, they, these are great. Really happy with these. Um, I think it's going to be cool to see what people do with them. Um, and then we've got some more greens. Um, but this time it's more jade greens. Um, so this is hydro green, jade green, and ghoul green. Um, so these are um, like you imagine like painting gems or something like that. And you want that mm. sort of deep green in the stone. It's that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, these ones are uh, really nice tones. Or ancient um, dinosaurs, uh, Jay. No, they, yeah, they're good well, color for those. Yeah. There's Not a couple of scales. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, trides on here that 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 jump out at me for the for, for, for some lizards on there as well. Yeah, but certainly this one as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the the hydro green is. Um, I mean, it's it, it's one of my favorite colors anyway because it's like that dark jade. You could just use it for everything for shading red. Shading purple yeah. for mm. using behind a blue, you can get a cold tone in it, you can get a warm tone. Oh, it's just when you use it, you're just like, wow. Again, as Duncan was saying with the greens, they just go on and they flow wonderfully and smoothly, and you've got a nice coat to work from. And yeah, it's just a joy to use hydro green. Is it's um, I've had a lot oh, of fun yeah. with that one. Oh, yeah. And as you move on to jade and ghoul green, um, they um. But they just flow really well, don't they? So if you're looking yeah. to do something with like really sharp highlights of those colours, if you want to get that crystal appearance where it's really um, really sudden as you move it to the highlights to make them look almost um, shiny or you know reflective, um, they basically flow really well for that. So yeah, this brings us then on to our next triad, which is sort of um, dirty greys. I would describe yes. it as slightly sort of brown, like earthy sort of greyish kind of tones. Mm -hmm. um, so sort of like stone kind of colours. Now the first one's called ashen grey. Um, and this one's very much inspired by another colour that a lot of people were asking us about. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think uh, I, I'm curious to see what people think of that one. Um, so it, it's got a, ever so slight tone of green in it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's quite a strange, hard to pin down sort of colour. But again, it's one of those ones that's really useful for doing um, things you want to blend into the earth, like cloaks and things like that. It's great for that. And it shades down nicely when you put black wash over it too. And then this goes up through highlights, getting brighter. So we've got idle on grey and road on grey. So great for, I can say, sort of like dirty greyish tones that you might want to do. Stone. Then we've got um, some browns. Now, these are quite bright, punchy browns as they go up through the highlights. They start with a nice sort of... Um, Nice medium warm brown, I guess best to say, and that is uh, noble steed brown. And this one's great for painting horses, or you might call them noble steeds. <laughs> <laughs> um, and these go hot through sort of more orangey tones. So we've got dry reverse brown and satia brown for our highlights for that. Um, next up, we've got some ochre colours. Um, Gizmo fur, named after Roger's little doggy. Um, our security Aww. guard, bless him, barks at everyone and everything, and then he runs up to say hello. <laughs> and uh, then we get on to doing our uh, well two more triads of flesh tones now these ones are specifically done as flesh tones all the way through and we've got two on this stage um, so we've got the first one which is kind of sort of mediterranean kind of um uh, sort of tone you know like southern europe i guess um northern africa that sort of thing um and then after that we've got dark skin tones for like black skin um, so these are going to be really fun. I'm really interested to see what people do with these because they're really lovely tones that can really be combined in different ways, along with the other flesh tones that we've got already. So this is really going to uh, flesh things out, if you'll excuse the pun. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Love it, yeah, Duncan. It, it, love it. it it's, it's great. The, the skin tones, I remember when we were developing those, we, we put a lot of time and effort into, into yes. getting them, you know, getting them right, I think, is the best mm-hmm. way to, to start out to know as they should and as oh. you want flesh tones to do. But it's similar to the ones that we did in the first go, go you know, Dwarven Flesh, Elven Flesh and Barbarian Braum. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, the amount of people that, you know, the feedback we've had on just on those original flesh tones is like, oh my gosh, I can paint faces. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, these like, three colours. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and these are built on that with that same thing in mind. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, you're right. The Doing the um, Argonaut skin, Leonidas flesh tone and Ares flesh, they were ones that we worked a long time on, weren't they? Mm. Yeah, they were. Um, yeah, and uh, but they're coming out great. And uh, I've been painting some Republican Romans using these, and I think it's a really nice... Um, nice feel to them. Yeah, all, all our Romans in the uh, studio are painted with those as well. So, amazing, <laughs> great fun. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that brings us to the end of the uh, the main triads. Um, so the next one are ones that um, this is something that Roger was wanting right from the very start, and that is to have super popping highlights for people to use. Um, now, when you're on a triad system, um, you uh, are kind of constrained by having to try and cover you know, sort of dark, medium, light is general intent for each of these. Um, but sometimes you just want to go lighter. And uh, as Peter keeps telling me off for having in Raja, I apparently have a dark palette when painting things. Is this right, Peter? He does, yes. Duncan's <laughs> gone down. It, it would, I, I think it was one model of it, first or second time we went, and, and it's like, Roger, I said, has he always painted this dark? And Roger's like, no, it, 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 it's, it's happened recently. He's, he's, got all, he's got all dark phase. <laughs> it's like, like dark phase. Yeah, he's gone through his <laughs> dark phase. Yeah. Emotional metal sitting in the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so these ones are six colours that are just bright highlights. So these are intended to work with the existing triads of, you know, your primary colours and your secondary. Um, these are ones that we intend that you'd use as that final little spot highlight on things so of course we're interested to see what people do with them um, i've been using them for some glowing things so one of the sample models i painted to show these paints is a space marine it's a, um, a hell blaster and um, with a big plasma gun i've been using them on the glowing effect on top of the the gun oh, nice. uh, so yeah and my favorite out of these is hell spawn red this is the one that we were talking about that uh the i'm gonna call him a scientist because that's what it feels like he is people are being <laughs> Um, he just came back with the most red red ever. Uh, <laughs> when you put it next to other reds, they turn brown. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it, it it is amazing. It is like Duncan literally sat there and said, "I need this to be more red." Yeah. And, and he went, "Okay, then." And came back and it was like, "Oh, yeah. right, okay, yeah, that is that is well red." Yeah, <laughs> that is red. That is red. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the sample I sent through was just I just tried to make a lighter red, and of course uh, you start to go into oranges and pinks, right? Yeah. Like, just make it more red and we just couldn't get it right and the end he was just like hang on let me go and do something <laughs> i don't know how he did this some sort of dark magic to create it i was going to say did he did he pray to the chaos gods or something to, to create <laughs> it this is red hell spawn red isn't it mm. absolutely mm, maybe <laughs> clues in the name <laughs> yeah um, we're also very proud of the name craven yellow uh, <laughs> we thought that was fun. I've got I've got to say, how much fun did you have naming all these paints? Not just from this wave, but from the first wave. Because oh, it looks so, like you had a lot of fun. So much fun. Roger and I would do this as we're driving in the car for what some one work reason or another. We'd just like be coming out with names and noting them down <laughs> and signing as we went along. Um yeah, we we had more names that we couldn't use. Um uh I started coming out with ones that were puns on movies. I'm not sure we get away with them, and you know, one-liners from action heroes. Uh, <laughs> so. yeah, we, 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 I need to shout out to the uh, the, the crew at Transatlantis as well because we do have our own names, but um, it, it's quite amusing sometimes. You, you'd be walking past and going, "That paint's not called that." <laughs> um, yeah. So now we're on to uh, metallics. Um, so we've added some more metallics here. Now, um, the nature of what we wanted to add didn't really fit into triads this time. So what we did instead, we just have a really nice variety of metallic tones that can be combined with what we've got already. So, for example, um, Dwarven Iron is a really dark silver. So our surcoat silver is sort of like medium to dark, but this one's darker than that. Um, so you've got the thing with Overlord Brass is darker than Spartan Bronze. It's that, it's that sort of thing. Um, my favourite out of these is a tough to pick between Dwarven Iron and Platinum Crown, because Platinum's a really lovely super bright platinum colour, so a great highlight if you're doing white gold on things. Um, how about you, PJ? Have you got a favourite? Well, it, it's going to have to be Dwarven Iron, um, because now everything in the studio is painted with Dwarven Iron, <laughs> since we found that one. Um, but it, for me, it's got to be Copper, 
because the, the, the red in in that metallic paint is just mind poppedly just it's a beautiful paint it mm-hmm. but it kind of it looks like copper is the best way to put to, you know, to, mm-hmm. to say it when you use it and it and and again it's just like oh right okay yeah, yeah that's perfect mm-hmm. yeah i'm so. i'm really looking forward to seeing these i think out of the whole range the metallics my favorite out of the two thin coats range not just from like the range from any paint range i think they're excellent metal so really looking forward to seeing these Awesome. I'm glad you like the original ones. These ones, are, yeah, we had a lot of feedback on Wave 1 about the metallics being so good. Um, these ones are the same sort of properties. So mm. what you what you have currently in the existing ones, these are the same feel, same style, same shininess and everything. It's just more colours. So um, we're, again, we're really excited to see what people do with these. Um, this brings us on to washers. So we've added three new washers for this wave. Um, we've got a red, a blue, and a purple, and these are nice deep dark colours, and these are ones that will tend to come in, I think, in more fantasy sort of uses, like painting monsters and magical weapons and things like that. Um, so yeah, they're going to widen out the potential of what there is right now and um, build on top of what we've got. Um, and this is followed up by glazers. Now this is another interesting one. Uh, this is one where, again, we had loads of requests to do these. Um, so uh, yeah, we we heard, and so here we go, six glazers. So we've got red, yellow, blue, orange, green, and purple, and these go on top of colours and essentially change the tone. So they don't, um, so they look like a wash when you first see them, except they're much brighter colours. And rather than settling into recesses, what they tend to do is stick on flatter areas and give you essentially a colour filter on things. So what they allow you to do is to paint something with yellow, for example, and then put yellow glaze over the top of it. And what it does is intensify that yellow and make it more popping. Um, on to, Alternatively, what you could do is put a green glaze over it and start to tint it towards being green. So these are really fun for painters who like enjoying playing around with colours and things. And I know you've been using these a lot, haven't you, Peter? Uh, I have been using the glazes. They are the everyone's asking me what's the favourite thing about wave. Well, that's right. What's the favourite thing that you got coming? And it's like I'm not going to tell you because. <laughs> These are going to blow your mind when you see them. They are absolutely amazing. Um, we've got some we've got some examples that you'll see on the Kickstarter as well of some surcoats painted with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, your eyes hurt when you look at the red and, <laughs> and, and the green. It's just that these are all pure, undilated. Uh, yeah, they're just amazing. Um, I've, I've used the well, I went back and paint, repainted all of my uh, Oryx, my yellow, red, yellow with the yellow glaze. Um, and all you can see is the shields. It's brilliant. Nice. <laughs> big I'm, sneaky uh, orcs going through the uh, swamps with their huge, bright yellow shields. I'm really looking forward to these two. Uh, since all since the paint supplies discontinued their glaze ranges, I've got a few precious drops in a bottle that I've been clinging on to. So hopefully these will be able to replace them. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I, I remember hearing about that sort of stuff uh, for years, people saving onto these bottles and things like that. So uh, so anyway, yeah, I think that's why it was a big request. Didn't, I didn't expect that when Wave 1 came along. But uh, but yes, we uh, you know, what I say, give the people what they want. And uh, so there you go, 60 paints of all kinds of lovely colours. Amazing, very exciting. So do you have any details on, on, on the kind of the Kickstarter uh, kind of tiers that you've got this time around? Uh, we're keeping it simple this time around with the Kickstarter. Uh, we're doing 60 paints of Wave 2, or you can have 60 paints of Wave 1, or you can have all 120 paints. Amazing, nice and easy. Nice and easy. With, with, it being, with the range being out there and established now, we, we think that... We're, you know we're in a good position for people to say yes we want these colors and away you go you get all of them uh, again as with duncan uh, as he said at the beginning is that this is more of a um kind of i wouldn't say an add-on to wave one but it's it's probably more of a complete package isn't it dunk that mm-hmm. rather than you know this is your black this is your white this is your as i say to, like to me looking at these colors it feels like the the range is um complete as complete as a, a paint range could be i guess yeah. um but yeah there's still oh, sure. potentials of things that we can you know we've got other ideas and things that we could add who knows maybe in the future but um with these um it kind of becomes a phrase a self-sustaining thing you could just uh, paint anything just floating around in this this standard of paint um and uh, this has actually been an interesting thing because uh so uh, my wife started painting miniatures all of a sudden she just started <laughs> doing it one day and she's really got into it 
and she has of course been dipping into my paint collection and she's ended up just using all of these <laughs> well, <laughs> excellent. Um, so yeah and she's been painting all kinds of things of all sorts of different types and stuff and she just doesn't go out of these covers now um so that's good um but i've told her if there's things that are missing that she thinks that we should do she should tell me um so far she's not told me anything yeah, good Amazing. So obviously on Kickstarter again, what were the ups and downs of the first Kickstarter? And is there anything you're doing different this time around? <laughs> Silence. Uh, the, 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 the ups. question for Peter. <laughs> that, that is a question for me. The, well, the ups. Uh, well, the downs are the sleepless nights. I, 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 I bet. I, I know. Um, no, I, I think a lot's been learned, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, the, the, the lessons learned, we have tried to make sure that every time that we we went ah, that we could have done it better we think we have this time around um with with little things like knowing the lay of the land um and i don't want to go too much into the world in 2023 as it is now uh, it's a different place uh, we think we've adapted to that we think we can understand that uh, there's a lot more that we can control now in the process uh for example from this time last year we didn't have a uh, manufacturing plant in Liverpool this year you know we do now um so we've got all that under our control uh, I mean as, as Duncan can attest for wave two it's just gone so put my well, perfectly but smoothly hasn't it totally different with the planet yeah, it's totally different it's like all oh, right okay we need to do this we need to do that uh you know we've got so much prepared now mm. because we know about it because those lessons have been learned yeah. um we do I that fair, it's fair to say with, with wave one um the, it was held up with um unexpected things constantly happening um, that um, have been dealt with during that process, which means now there's basically a system that's laid out. So, um, every, I mean, like all the, all the things that you wouldn't expect, you wouldn't really think about, like um, uh, the long story that happened with the foam in which the paints were packed. Um, well, now that's there and it's no longer a case of, right, we've got to sort this out now because all these crazy things are happening around the world that have knock on effects and stuff. So it's um, it's like the path's already been trodden, hasn't it, Peter? Yeah, yeah, it, it's, um, I, I don't want to make it sound as simple because it's a huge logistical operation, but oh, it's yeah. almost it, it's <laughs> almost like a cut and paste now, isn't it? It's like, oh, right, we did this last time. There we go, we just do it again, repeat, yeah. Uh, yeah. rather than going, oh, right, okay, we've got to solve this problem and 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 et cetera. It's, um, it, it's a lot easier this time around, isn't it? Isn't it, Duncan, with, with the planning and stuff like that? It's almost like, second nature we would say yes. hopefully yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna go so much smoother <laughs> <laughs> pros at this now i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> i would say that <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you have an expected release date then for the for the second wave uh it's going to be six months from the end of the kickstarter amazing so, yeah Thanks a lot, guys, for coming on and chatting to us about the new paints, guys. Really excited to seeing what what everyone does. Are you guys excited to see what the community does with these paints as well? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the coolest thing. I tell you, it's surreal seeing normal, like out there, normal situations and being used. Um, it's a very odd experience. I can, I, I struggle to get my head around it. I, I, I think I just uh, quantify it. Oh, it's some of the paints that people are using, and then you see my name on the side of it, and it freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think people are really going to enjoy them. I can't, I can't wait to see what they do. Uh, I'm especially interested to see what starts happening with all the glazers. Um, I think people are going to have a lot of fun with those. Um, yeah, I, I just really hope people like them. Amazing. What's the what's the feedback been generally for the first wave? I know where uh, there's been a few glowing reviews of the uh, the range, hasn't there? Yeah. Um, thank goodness people like them. <laughs> so uh, uh, I think a thing that stood out to me is um, we've had so on on our website um, we will get people sending us emails in telling us about them and their experiences and things, um, and uh, a lot of them have been reflecting on something I was trying to explain in uh, various um, podcasts and things back with Wave One, um, in that the paints have a particular quality about them. Um, they are Basically, there's really high quality ingredients going to them, and there's things in there that are a little bit different um, to what people might be used to. Um, so the result is they uh, just go on silky smooth. They go on really nicely. They cover really well. Um, they do exactly what I would hope a paint would do. Um, and this is consistent throughout the entire range. And so it's not just like there's certain colors you know are good and certain ones that you would rather avoid and like go around the house and try and get the result you want. All of them do what, the, what I would want them to do. Um, and 
we started getting emails in um, saying that they suddenly understood why I was trying to explain. And it's a difficult thing to um, to get across, really. And I was just having to resort to saying, um, trust me, when you try one, you'll get what I mean. And this is what a lot of the feedback was saying. So uh, I was um, really proud, really, <laughs> really relieved, frankly, that people were saying that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's mentioned earlier about kind of the consistency of some colours, bones and yellows and oranges. Sometimes a bit finicky to get right, but just they just go on so nicely. I say it's hard to explain how like smoothly they go on while retaining the kind of pigmentation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah it was it was a key thing of the whole range right at the very beginning. Um, it was uh, honestly it was just as important, in some ways, more important than the actual colours itself. Getting it to to do what you want it to do um yeah and we're really proud that it, it does it so well amazing well very exciting good luck for the kickstarter guys i'm sure it'll be a massive success and yeah can't wait to paint some miniatures now awesome thank you thank you